Howdy ho, neighbor. This is Joe Gilder from HomestudioCorner.com. Got a little more of an advanced video having to do with processing, specifically compression, on your mix bus. But it's a new way of thinking about it, and it can give you subtly different changes depending on what you want. Uh, but it's a new way of thinking. I was talking about it recently uh, somewhere. <laughs> I don't know if it was an interview or a uh, on a coaching call or a, anyway. But it, it, it struck me that this would make for a cool video. So here is, just real quickly, this is the same uh, song that I was using in last week's video. Um, which is one we're doing over at Dueling Mixes. But this is the kind of the typical setup that I will use for mix bus compression. Two to one ratio, 30 millisecond attack, 100 millisecond release, a little bit of makeup gain because we're not compressing all that much. And then just so you can see, this is what kind of it looks like when it hits. Okay? So So a song like this tends to have, it has a little bit of a uh, kind of an R&B vibe to it, real big kick drum, which is, how, which is how I mixed it. And so most of the compression's happening when the kick drum hits. The problem, though, that I heard is when I listen to it compared to the, the, the compressor being off, which I'll turn it off right here, you'll notice the kick drum to me when the compressor is off sounds a little fuller. And when I turn the compressor on, the mix tightens up but that low end gets a little it has a little less life so here it is with the compressor and then I'll take it off okay here we go so to me the the kick drum sounds more muffled when the compressor's on. Um, and it doesn't sound as punchy and in your face, especially if you were to crank this on some speakers to listen and have a lot of low end there. It just, it, it's not bad, but for me, I was feeling like, you know, I wish there was more low end coming through. So what I've done is I've taken those settings on that same compressor. These are all the exact same settings. And the only difference is I engage this lower right hand corner. Now, if you don't use Studio One from PreSonus, you may have to figure out a way to do this, but it has an internal side chain filter. And that allows me to basically use low cut and high cut filters to adjust what the compressor is listening to. So if we listen to this, here's what we're hearing. Oops, hang on. So the compressor is hearing everything with everything below 96 hertz rolled off. Okay? And so the way I set this up is I... I turn this sidechain filter on, I'm listening to it, and I'm basically going to roll this up until I don't hear the low kick drum and bass anymore, so that it's no longer going to trigger the compressor. So let's do that right now. Okay, after listening that time, I think 71 is great. We lost kind of that lowest octave of awesome, and so that's now what the compressor is listening to. So when we stop listening to the filter, we'll look, and we'll see that the compressor is now not responding to the kick drum hardly at all. It's responding to everything else in the mix, like the vocals and the snare drum. And that ends up sounding like this. Now, I know in demo world, I'm not supposed to tell you what to listen to. You're supposed to just be able to hear it. But I'll acknowledge that this is fairly subtle. Um, but if you mess around with it, you'll hear it if you play with it in your own studio. Um, what's happening is we're basically letting everything below 70 hertz go through untouched. Um, it does still get compressed, but it's not those low kick drum sounds aren't triggering the compressor. So it's kind of working like a multiband compressor, only we're just saying compress everything, just don't listen to the really low stuff. Let that come on through without triggering much compression. And what happens, the audible final product sound for me is that I get more thump and punch in the low end. So here is the first compressor. Listen specifically to the kick drum. Okay, and now here is the second way. Listen again to the kick drum. Now 
Now what I'll do is I'll just switch between the two for a second. So what I hear, and again, this is subtle. Actually, in my mix of this song, I never actually did any bus compression because I was happy with what was what was happening. But if you want to get a little of that kind of tightening on the mids and the highs without losing your low end, this is a great way to do it. And if you didn't hear that, rewind it, try it a few times, or better yet, go try it in your studio. Figure out a way to set this up, and then flip back and forth. And if you have a really low end kick drum heavy mix, what you'll find is it starts to punch a lot more. And you don't have as much of that pumping where the kick drum hits and everything else gets ducked down for just a micro, you know, for a couple milliseconds. Um, and it has, that can be a cool effect, but sometimes it just sounds too squashed. And it's like the mix is trying to, it's like the Hulk trying to break free of the chains or something. And you're holding it down. So by doing this, the second form, by rolling off the low end of side chaining what the compressor is listening to, we allow that punch to come through. And then the upper and mid range can all be compressed normally without the low frequencies affecting it. Okay, I hope that made sense, and if not, let me know. I'll try to explain it better another day. <laughs> but I'm Joe from HomestudioCorner.com. If you haven't gotten your free ebook and you're not signed up for the daily email newsletters, you need to stop and go do that now over at HomestudioCorner.com. You will not regret it. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.